Shut up and sit down. Hey everybody, Barry here again. Hey everybody, Barry here again. Back at the engine build again. Man, this is so exciting. So we saw this last time. It's green. Yep. It's definitely green. But dude, how clean did it come out? Woo wee. Now I have to paint other things, other colors. Like those three colors. And a little bit more green. I just can't have any of the touch. I can't have any of the colors touching apart with the same color because it needs to be kind of all over the place. Now the thing is I have like 15 parts to paint and four colors. So this is gonna be like layers, like an onion. So I guess it's time to get some more parts painted up. And that's what I'm gonna focus on today. I have a few parts over here. <laughs> uh, like the balancer, I guess I could probably clean up. Down there is everything else, oil pan, front cover, valve covers, all that fun stuff. Another valve cover right there with the turbo drain in it. Now on a regular, say car, the turbo drain in the valve cover will be way too high and you'd have issues with oil backing up in the turbo. That's not an issue with the rat rod because the engine sits way low and the turbo sits really, really high. So the drain comes in almost a straight shot from the turbo into the valve cover. And it worked really, really well last year. It was perfectly fine with no issues. So let's, uh, let's pull out all the parts. I'll line them up over here on the bench so we can plainly see them. I'll grab a wire wheel on a grinder or on a drill and just wire wheel it until it's clean. Paint. Yes. I have no idea what combination I'm going to do stuff. Obviously, I know that the valley cover can't be green. So I think maybe, 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 like, um, I don't, uh, I don't like yellow. So potentially, I'll do the valley cover yellow. One cylinder head red, one cylinder head blue. Then maybe I'll do a red valve cover on the blue head. Maybe change it up, maybe put a yellow valve cover over here or a blue one over here. You see where I'm getting, I gotta do some, come up with some sort of a pattern where this is gonna work. It's gonna be difficult. I'm gonna have to do everything one piece at a time so I can keep track of what's what. If I do blue and red cylinder heads and valve covers, the coil pack brackets are either gonna have to be yellow or green or one of each, which is fine. I'm sure it's gonna look fine anyway. It's not gonna be greasy and crusty looking yellow. It's gonna be nice and clean. Believe me, I know how ridiculous this is. And if you hate it already, Mission accomplished, I guess. <laughs> Let's paint up some stuff. So this stuff here is the really easy stuff that I can do with just a wire wheel. This is gonna be really, really easy. Just pull this sensor off, a little bit of brake cleaner, all good. Pretty much the same here, there's not a lot to that. This stuff here is gonna need some disassembly. I'll paint the coils also. This one here just needs to be stripped. Same here, I'll pull that rear crank seal out. I'll pull that front crank seal out. I'm gonna replace all that. Then after that, I can do the oil pan. That was absolutely rotten, so it's gonna take some cleaning. Well, let's start with this valley cover, I guess.
Mint. Well, that was done. We'll lay it aside. I don't know why I didn't expect that to be so hard on the lungs, but it was. So, wear a respirator. Next up, we have the rear cover, which is also full of corrosion. Seal. Another one done. Just got to clean out here. A little bit of wire brush. Nothing serious. So, I'll use some degreaser on this after because I'm wearing gloves that have some greasiness on them. But this, uh, this should work well. A little bit of hand work here. And That wire wheel, that wire cup wheel, that is dangerous and aggressive, but it does the job really fast. And this aluminum corrosion dust is really hard on the lungs. So wear a respirator. done ready to paint and it's really clean inside too there's not like a crazy amount of work to this but if you take your time have all the flaky stuff off all the corrosion off and then use some degreaser the time you put into it really pays off with how nice it works i know it's really really easy to just mask it spray it completely assembled and and, and they just make it one solid color. But I usually always uh, paint all the bolts too, or the bolt heads anyway. My box taught me a little trick where you take a box and stab a pile of holes in it, stick the bolt in and just paint just the heads and it doesn't get into the treads at all then. It's not like laying it all down on the bench and just spraying and all the threads get full of paint. But, These valve covers are coming out nice too. Getting pretty good already. I can't use the cup wheel on this because it'll hook into these old knob things here and fly off and try to kill me. So, a little bit of hand work on this one. This one was pretty much bare metal with a lot of grease on it. So, the soap did a lot to this one. Now it has some black paint on it, so it, uh, it kind of melted that off too. But I, I 
I'm really pleased with how well it comes out inside. That's, that just looks great. The cleaner it is inside when you put it together, the cleaner your oil is going to be. And this valve cover, you can see, was blue. It was blue and I painted it black for the rat rod. And the black is starting to come off a little bit too. So I'll just paint over that too. Scrape off all the loose stuff. Everything else, whatever's on there now is staying there. The inside of this one looks really good too. A little bit of sludginess there, but not very much. I ran a catch can on the rat rod, so it never really got very dirty. Cleaning stuff is tedious, but it's all 100% worth it when it's done. When you look at it, and it looks so clean and nice. I'm going to pull off this crank sensor for this cam sensor cover. Even something as small as this. This cover is going to go one color, and this bracket here, and the sensor is going to go a different color. Because I've always been known to overdo everything for no particular reason or gain. But that's just how I roll, I guess. Normally it just makes more work for me for no reason. No actual benefit. this cam sensor out without breaking it, it will be wonderful. Oh, I broke it. Man, they're so hard to get out. So I don't think it's actually broken. It's just the tab broke off up here, but I don't think I'm going to use it. I've got another couple of them, so. Brake cleaner, where are you? Here you are. There's no real corrosion or anything on this part. Just some oil. So brake cleaner and make real quick quick work of that. is done. I'm not going to strip the paint off of this because it doesn't need to come off. It'll act as a good base anyway. I know the paint is good because it hasn't peeled anyway. And if brake cleaner doesn't take the paint off then Nothing else will either. And this is the front cover that I had on the first caravan engine and the second caravan engine. 
So that's a that's one that I painted like a year ago. Or Looks like I had a run in it. I don't like runs. <laughs> Another old seal gun. Probably should have painted it with the old seal in there actually, and then beat the seal in, but I don't want to ruin the finish, so. And the coil brackets I'll do a little bit later. I kind of want to paint a couple things now. So to degrease, I'm going to use this. It used to be called Final Wipe. Now it's called Wax and Grease Remover. Part number is right here, PF603-1. It's good stuff. I'll just soak it in a rag a little bit, wipe it over, and it'll evaporate on its own. So I might as well do this front cover first. Got a clean towel here. Don't need very much. Just give it a quick wipe. And it evaporates pretty much as I'm wiping it on. Now for the gasket surface. This is going to stick or not? Probably not. Just enough there to stop it from filling up the gasket ceiling surface with paint. That's fine. Same for the cam sensor hole. Doesn't take much. Just something to stop paint from getting in there, that's all. Now for the front cover, I think I'm gonna do yellow because I'm gonna have the big balancer right here. The water pump is gonna be there. You're gonna see very little of the front cover. Now, I know there's gonna be yellow on it anyway, but I just cannot get my head around it. I cannot, I can't make myself like it yet. And maybe I will and I'll be like, oh man, I'll do the intake yellow, but so far, we're gonna hide it away. Let's see what it looks like. And it looks like it's full of chemicals. Yay. Uh, it might work, it might not. Give this a wipe. <laughs> I completely ruined it. Sick. Well, now I'm committed.
Well, it doesn't look great yet, but a couple of more coats and hopefully it'll start to get rid of that purple base. Maybe I should have put down some silver first just to give it a lighter base. It might have made it shinier, but eh, like I said, it's a front cover. Won't be able to see it that well, but I really don't like how it's all spotty like that. Maybe I should have let the final wipe evaporate a lot longer, but it looks like it's peeling up. Maybe the purple that's underneath. Yeah, I'm not a big fan. And it's definitely reacting over here. It is not happy. Well, you're going under the shelf. And this is going into soup. See you tomorrow. This time, I'm just going to do a quick blow off with this here. And let's do a dark blue on this one. See what it looks like. So I'm not going to do too much. Just quick test spray. See if it reacts at all. We'll check back in a couple of minutes. This paint lays it way thicker. Well, it seems happy enough. No peeling or anything. No, it's a little bit uneven and stuff, but the, uh, the coil covers are going to be bolted directly on top of this. So let's Give her bickies. And get my hands full of paint. If anybody's figured it out so far, I am not a body man. I don't even pretend to know how to paint. That looks good. Well, this one's dry enough for me to move. So let's do red. I forgot to put on my earmuffs. I'm having horrible on the ears. I did pick up red. Red. Ooh, that's pretty. This is gonna be so sick. And I sprayed a little bit of paint on this one. It looks decent. I think I'll give it another quick spray on this side. Sweet. Now let's make this one yellow. I'll give that a second to tack up and then uh, give it another coat. I didn't quite expect that to be as dark as it is. I'll give it a couple more coats tomorrow and I think this will look good too. Well, it's the next day and it looks like we have a permanent ICT Valley cover because apparently this will not cover Sharpie. Let's give it another coat anyway.
Dude. That doesn't want to cover at all. Oh, it's close though. One more coat. Well, this one's done. And now we can move on to the next part. Now this is the rear cover and it's not going to be seen, but I know it's going to be in there and you guys know it's going to be in there. So we're going to paint it. And I'm going to do this one yellow also. Because I like to keep all the blue and the reds and the greens for outside the engine. That's a gasket surface down here too, so I just want to cover that up. Got a little bit of chemical reaction going on here too. Just imagine if I knew what I was at. It'd probably be dangerous. Let's give it another coat. See if I can completely mess this up too. Oh, it's yellow. Now back to this front cover. Let's see what it looks like. Some nasty stuff in this cleaner. <laughs> it sucked the color right out of it. There's like no yellow left out of it at all. I guess I'll rinse it, wipe it down, and scrape off some of that bad looking stuff there. And I'll repaint it. Well, I washed it and then scraped it. But man, that looks so cool. There's like patina cover. Hmm. I almost don't want to paint it now. Well, yellow's bad luck, so we're going to do red. wonder if this is going to work or not. Oh, I need to tape this first. I just can't wait to see what this whole thing looks like put together. The metal's cold. Paint's probably not gonna adhere that great. Work. Nah, close enough. What we got? Red. Well, no alligator skin so far. Crocodile skin, whatever you want to call it. But it is rough looking though. Hmm. Probably should strip all of that. Sometimes trial and error comes out with a lot more error. And it takes a little more trial. I know the front cover is not going to be seen a lot, but I really don't like the way that looks. So, back in the bucket you go. Get in. She's coming off already. Ugh. 
Gross. Next stop is going to be porting the heads. Won't be these because I broke that one when I dropped the engine. But I need three valve springs and keepers and retainers and all that stuff. So I'm going to pop three valves out. Uh, right now I just have this tool, which is going to be super sketchy. And I have no idea if it's going to work or not. It might try to kill me, but let's try it. I've never tried this one before. this down. Oh, oh, oh boy. Oh, I don't like it. <laughs> Dwayne, this thing makes me seriously nervous. Oh boy, one keeper came out. Oh, there's a bomb. Shot. The valves are good anyway. This machine is sketchy. Like absolutely sketchy too. Smack yeah. in the knuckles. Nah, they're getting lapped to the new heads anyway. Oh. And the springs don't matter because they're getting thrown out the bay, probably. Whatever. Don't grab them. Keep them ready to go first. Yeah, for sure. Or... This is uh, actually not horrible. Yeah, I put another turn on in a minute. Yeah, go. God, I don't like this at all. I like Rodney's tool a lot better. With the big C clamp thing. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was effort. But it worked. Yeah. Sick. Hmm. Well, there's the three valves that I need. That works. Well, while I'm here, I might as well take all these out so that I can start porting in the next one. Well, there's going to be something. Anything 
there. I feel like I'm going to get to the last one, and it's probably going to try to take my eye out. Because it's going pretty well so far, so. What? I did say it. I shouldn't have said it. It's foreshadowing. I have the old style that screws down. Oh yeah. Oh, they're horrible. I've had so many fly across the room. Yeah, it screws into the, where the rocker screws in, right? Well, yeah, there's a lever style like that one too. They work really well. I That's, saw somebody made one. Sloppy makes them, yeah. Or made his own with a bolt and like a wrench or something. Yeah. It was great. I've seen it made with a wrench. Yeah, you can drill a hole in a wrench. It's like the right size wrench. Yeah. You made some serious drill bit. Oh, come on, that'd be nice. Huh? Oh, yeah? fast. I'll put new valve seals out too. We got one rusty looking port, but that's nothing that die grinder won't figure out. When I was young, I always wanted to buy an extrude home machine. What's that for? So extrude like home is like, they have a mixture of like fluid and sand. Oh, nice. And they pump it through this through the uh, port at like a really high speed and high high pressure. Oh, so it's like a sandblaster. It basically Sand polishes blaster. the port and reshapes it oh. with, with an abrasive sand. And because water travels the same as air, in a sense, it makes it the most aerodynamic, like most uh, port volume and all that, right? Like nice. Yeah. But it's like fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, it sounds like. <laughs> I don't care what valves go back into what head, really. Yeah. 15, 20 psi doesn't care how much. Not true. It doesn't really care how well the valves are seated. Yeah. <laughs> set a couple of years ago oh, yeah. and I missed it it was it was all the stones yeah and all the the guide yeah. things I don't know stones or yeah. uh, oh, I can't remember what it's called the things that you put in the guide to make sure it's straight yeah, when you're grinding yeah man it was cool yeah that's what basically like the team we had was like it kind of just looked like a big mill or a drill press yeah and then the head would like lock into this carriage and then you would put each bit into the it was a mill right yeah and and it would center it through the the four or the uh the valve guide 
right? You'd sit it in there and it had different blades on it to do each each angle. Yep. So you do one, two, three, four. And then that same machine actually had a separate section built into it that did all the valves. Oh, that's, that's cool. You know, we grind all the valves. To the exact okay, this one wasn't for the valves. It was for grinding the ports for bigger valves or, yeah, yeah. or reshaping yeah. them or whatever. Right? Yep. This, this machine did both the actual head and the and the valve. Oh, nice. Yeah. I think the word I'm thinking about is an arbor. Huh? I think the word I was thinking about was arbor. Yeah. For yeah. making sure that it was straight in the yeah. guide. Man, this tool is pretty quick. It says wear safety glasses, but I can't read, so yeah. I guess it doesn't apply to me. Get off. There we go. Last one. Woo. Oh, oh no. <laughs> one valve is stuck. some rustiness in it too, but that's okay. Great, now I'm dirty. Well, seeing as I have all the springs out, let's do a comparison. I'm sure this has been done a thousand times, but I haven't really done it. Ooh, so shiny. So these are the Pack 1218s that Jorge sent me. And let's see, pick one that's not too oily. That is wild. Oh man, that's like a quarter inch higher. Wicked. And these work with the stock retainers and everything. Let's grab one of these. Fits there perfect, stock keepers will work. Obviously I need to clean all this stuff. So you go back in the box where you're safe. Came with stickers too, so they're going on the right run. Sick. So I'm pretty much ready to port these heads. I was going to paint them first, but there's not much sense in me painting the heads and then porting them and then reassembling them and scratching them all up and then probably going to have to go paint it again. So I'm going to end this video off here because it's, it's getting a little bit long now again for one of my engine building videos. Um, got a lot done. Obviously the block was painted last video and we've got our assortment of colors. Rodney, I showed him a picture and he said, what are you doing painting AMC colors? I was like, that is hilarious. If there was no green, it would look just like an AMC or one of the four or three AMC colors. But, oh, also, 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 Rodney gave me some wires. These are ones that he took off of a vehicle and they're in wicked shape. So I'm going to clean these up, give them some spray and iron, and I'll use those. Plus they're red, so it matches 
that over there. I'll clean them up. So you go back in there. Oh, I dropped one. And they're the Corvette style ones too that have 90 degree ones so they can stay away from the manifolds. And so they're gonna work really, really well. So thanks a bunch. So I'm gonna finish it up here. And another quick little update, hit 4,000 subscribers like yesterday. That's super exciting. And I cannot wait to see where all this goes and how many new people come in and, and, and you know, I read all you guys' comments. So I, I know who the regulars are and you guys are all awesome. And I uh, had a lot of new names coming up that I haven't seen before. So let me know who you are, where you're from. If you've made it this far in the video, then I salute you because <laughs> it's a long one. And I'm sure it's not that exciting watching me screw up paint jobs like three, four times in a row. So yeah, let me know where you're from and who you are. And if you got a cool project down to go, let me know. Also, if uh, anybody has any cool projects and want to post them in a group, I have a Facebook group called Station Road Rat Rods YouTube. And uh, it's it, anybody can join, just keep clean, no political stuff, because there's lots of groups for that. And post some pictures, videos, whatever. So I'm gonna finish it up here. And thanks to my YouTube members and Patreon subscribers. If you want to check out my Patreon, it is patreon.com slash stationroadratrods. And thanks for watching. Have a great day, everybody.